Hi guys, welcome to the video. Uh, this one is about Retrobat version 6. It's finally out. Um, it's been out in beta versions 1, 2 and 3 for a little while now, but now we have version 6 released. So here's their uh, launch trailer on, uh, on YouTube. We've got to start with this. Um, kind of highlights a few of the, uh, the features. So there we go. Uh, that, that was the launch trailer. So yeah, quite exciting for me anyway. Uh, hopefully other people as well. V6 out now in stable. So obviously you can go grab it now. So this, the video, I guess, just to highlight that and kind of give you um, information about it and obviously how to upgrade if you've got the existing version of Retrobat. And thankfully it's quite easy. Um, so like I said, I'll leave the links in the description, but you can grab it from their, from their GitHub um, page here, download the executable to install. Um, or you can go straight to um, uh, the Retrobat website. I had a change log here ready to go, but if you go to the retrobat.org website, you've got the download link here or here. Um, it's much the same as before if you used this before already. Obviously, now it says version 6. Uh, before it was in, in beta only. So you hit the download now button um, and um, you're pretty much good to go. Um, but like I say, if, you, if you've got pre existing, um, um, you can you can do an upgrade from your existing version. Um, obviously, if you're new to this, hit the download now. And you'll download this the same file that's here, that the EXE. It's about, just about a gig in size, um, and that will take you through the install. Um, I've covered the install on cover other other videos, and I think on the on the version six beta three, it's exactly the same. Um, if if you're first or first time doing this or new to Retrobat, um, literally run the EXE, follow the prompt, pick where you want to install it, and pretty much away you go. Um, so if you, want to, if you do want to see that, check out my previous video on, on Beta 3. So but for, <clears throat> for now, I'm working on a basis that you've got Retrobat either you've already got a version 5.3, which is with the previous stable version, or you're running um, uh, Beta 3, which is the latest Beta with version 6. Um, it doesn't mention about whether you're running Beta 1 or Beta 2 with version 6. Um, so I guess if you are, you probably want to upgrade to Beta version 3 first and then go to stable. Or do a fresh install. I guess it's up to you. Um, but anyway, let's, let's just get on with it. So yeah, as I was on the website, there's a change log uh, page here. Um, a lot, of the, I think a lot of the Retrobat team are based in France, so sometimes you'll get this uh, this pop up. But you can change the language here to the to the right language anyway. So here we go. Yeah, big long change log. I'm not going to read through the whole lot. You guys, you can read this yourselves. But um, there's lots of improvements around. Um, Automatic support for for light guns um, and fixing them for the for various different emulators here. So PS2 and PS3, and then obviously Flycast for for Dreamcast, Duck Station, PlayStation, and then Supermodel and Lib Retro cores. Um, so they've added a menu in there to manage your light guns, um, a detection of the gun for IR guns in Retrobat, and um, fix some some issues with the with the Sindon. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's you know improved the uh, the light gun support, which is good. Um, a few other fixes here, uh, so I won't go through them all, 
like you know various little fixes to make the experience much better um, you can see yeah, bits and pieces here um, there's lots of stuff for the interface um, and I, personally I found version 6 the interface a lot more fluid um, a lot more responsive um, you know, better looking as well I think they've added some you know some features tra transparency features where some things are like translucent you can see through it looks really nice so yeah like I've been running the beta for a while now and, and it's, it's running running very nice um, again so we're moving on a few updates so obviously with each update they they tend to just update a lot of the existing emulators that are in here updating the standalone emulators to the latest version but also updating um, RetroArch and the RetroArch cores so somewhere in here it mentions that RetroArch itself is updated to 116 although I, I do believe now 117 has just come out but you know obviously they've got to when they start developing it they've got to kind of go with the latest version at the time um, if they suddenly change to 117 they'll have to go back and retest everything so um, so 116 a lot of the cores have obviously been updated to the latest version at the time um, so they've added a few more systems as well so the eduke which obviously plays the duke nukem games um, gz doom um, some dark forces a few other bits and pieces and obviously the one removal is the 4d core for the panasonic 3do um, but i believe there is another core that handles that or you know if not the standalone emulator so it's not like 3do support has been dropped it's just that particular core in retro arts either because it's I don't know, and not been supported for a while or out of date. I'm not sure what the reason is, but I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Um, and like I say, they've added added more support for various systems. Um, and yeah, here we go. So RetroArch up to 116, and also all the cores or the emulators within RetroArch updated. Um, and then most of the standard emulators have now been updated to the latest versions. So Dolphin for obviously your GameCube and your your Wii, um, and then Dolphin Triforce for um, the arcade machines that were based on GameCube hardware. Um, yeah, PlayStation 2, PlayStation, PS3, Vita, PSP, Future Pinball. So a whole yeah, whole, whole bunch of updates in here. Obviously new features. Um, so some new systems supported by the mega bezels. So that's the um, you know see so the bezels that you see on the each side of the screen when you've when you've got like a widescreen monitor and you're running a four by three game, you, you can feel the edge of the screen with the with the bezels or decorations that as they're referred to in here. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, small things, adding zip support for PSP, other bits and pieces, some other options <laughs> to enhance everything. Like I say, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. You can read through if you want to, but I guess just in, you know, the general thing is it's been updated, new versions of emulators, new features, things improved, little bugs or issues fixed, um, and there's some dev stuff here right at the bottom. So where they've um, done a bit of changes to where, where they're hosting it. Um, They've you know, the screen scraper that's used for for scraping games, or one of the scrapers that's used for scraping artwork, etc. has been updated to so hopefully inc increase scraping speed, which is good, especially if you've got a big collection. That can take a while. Yeah, improved detection of, of the eboot files for PS3. Um, Change configuration of the controller for PlayStation 3. Other bits and pieces. The interesting one here, just sneaked in at the bottom. So prep functionality to manage save states for more standard images, which is good. So a future future thing coming and I did see somewhere I might have skipped past it the other thing that they've starting to add is support for steering wheels um, for those driving games so that's quite cool I've seen Batasira doing the same same kind of thing introduce looking to introduce that support so imagine all those driving arcade driving games or driving games for those various systems that you, you know, in theory you now be able to use a steering wheel I presume with pedals as well so that's going to make the spirit you know so much better for driving games so I'm sure I saw it hit somewhere sneaked in somewhere on the list I thought that was it or I started reading it <laughs> without reading ahead but yeah it's in here somewhere about steering wheels um, I'm sure someone can find it um, but hopefully that's that's coming which is which is good uh, and then obviously a new logo as well they've updated some of the uh, the branding for it so yeah um, all good all exciting so without further ado like I say let's, uh, let's jump in and do the update so what's quite good is that like I say if you've before, if you were in the beta version and you had to upgrade between versions, you had to run scripts or you know, copy certain files. Now it's just a standard update. So if I fire up Retrobat, also I've got it running in a little window here, just so it's easier for me to record. So if I just go into the main menu here, we see at the bottom, I'm still version six beta. So to update, go to updates and downloads. And you see my update type is still set to beta, so it'll be looking for beta versions. Obviously, um, the new version of stable is out now, so change this to stable. Uh, and in theory, 
if I do start, it should go and check and say version 6 stable is available. There you go, so I'm currently run, running a beta version, dated the 13th for the first 24, which is, as we know, is beta 3. It's now saying that 6.0 stable. Do you want to update? Yes, I do. So, it would take a few minutes, because obviously, like I say, the, the standalone download, as you saw, to install it is, is about, about gig in size. So you'll get this little uh, notification in the top right here saying that it's uh, downloading the update. Um, and it's, it's fairly automatic. This all, so I might pause the video here while this downloads. It might take a few minutes, but it's going to download the update. It's then going to copy across the files. And then once it's done, as long as everything's successful, you should just get a message to say, you know, um, please restart to, you know, to um, start using the new version. So let that run for a minute. I'm just going to pause the video while it does that. Okay, I'll let it for a little while. You can just see that it changed to verifying to compare, make sure it downloads successfully. Now it's extracting. So, obviously it happens behind the scenes, but presumably downloads is a, a compressed file, zip file or, or similar. Or even maybe it does the executable, I don't know. <laughs> and then it's basically extracting it now. So pretty much extracting it over the top of the current Retrobat installation. So, I might just leave this or pause. I don't know, see how long it's gonna take. Um, but yeah, just while it's there, just as I mentioned um, some of these sort of enhancements into the interface. You can kind of see here where we've got the, the menu up, you can still see sort of the, the blurred transparent. Um, you can see through the menu, so it's got transparency, and you can see the menu behind, which I'm pretty sure in 5.3 that wasn't there. Um, so that's one of those nice little touches, and, and the menu bar, certainly in the, in the default. Um, the default theme here. The, you know the central bar across here we have the systems it, again is transparent you can see the background through it which is nice it's only, only a little thing but it kind of just you know gives it a much nicer feel and look so and I think that's one of the updates like I say I'm pretty sure that wasn't there in 5.3 I thought you know the, the menu was quite solid but anyway I stand to be corrected but anyway it does look nice and I think they've, they've done some work as well on the on the standard um, the standard theme uh, the carbon theme which is comes with it obviously you can download extra ones um, either manually or through through the menu here so you've got themes here you can go in and, and browse the theme catalog and, and download them and change the whole look and feel um, but yeah the, the default one's looking quite nice now actually I mean it's it, nothing wrong with it before but like I say uh, they've now sort of added a lot of nice back, you know, background artwork and anyway so that's now done so like I say update is ready reboot to apply it says reboot in, in, you know, that's not your whole PC that's kind of restart Retrobat so Please close the demonstration now and restart Retrobat to finish the update process. Open the main menu and select Quit or press Alt F4. Um, Alt F4 is a standard Windows shortcut to close the current window. Um, but we should, in theory, be able to just hit OK, come back from here, go to Quit, and let it close. Watch give it a second to make sure it's fully closed down all its processes. Uh, and then. Let's bring that back into view. Let's relaunch the XE. So it's just doing finishing off some of the updates now. Because uh, obviously, with Retropack running, you apply an update, it can't kind of update itself while it's while it's in use. So it's obviously doing that now. It's just replacing the files. There you go. Only a few seconds. There you go. Again, change the uh, like I say, the logo. Just drag this down. So again, the, I guess the um, the main carbon theme also is the same. But like I say you can see now that this, this central banner, the central sort of bar across here is just transparent. Looks really nice. Um, so that's it. So double check if we just go into the main menu, you can see now at the bottom here we're version six stable. So we're all good. Um, so yeah, let's. Have a quick look through. So, like I say, it's the uh, the new theme, new standard theme, is actually looking pretty nice. And I tempted to stay with this. To be honest, <laughs> normally one of the first things I do is, is is change the theme to ones that I, I normally use. Or, but this one's looking pretty good. So if you go into a system as well, see the actual sort of the layout in here is a lot nice. When you when you pause in a game, box box artwork pops up. You get the information. You get the little video playing, and then you can start scrolling through. Also with this and all the other themes you can change the layout and decide what the game list looks like, whether it's a 
a, you know, a wheel like this or whether it's a, a big list of the games or a text list or most of them you can kind of customize but like I say the, the standard theme for me is looking <laughs> looking really nice um, so like I say for new features um, like I say all the emulators up, updated the interface speed it up the scraper should be speeded up because the scraper is now using an updated version but I think one of the things they mentioned in that video I just good to go back to what I mentioned the themes so here's all the additional themes you can download. Touch of Glass is a nice one. Um, so there's loads, loads in here. Artflix is one that I quite often use. Um, it's a nice one. There's, there's, you know, slightly odd, but there's one for Batasira here. But obviously, Batasira and Retrobat both use Emulation Station as the front end, as the you know, graphical interface. So, you know, pretty much um, a theme. Themes are compatible with both. It's, you know, at the end of the day, the theme is for Emulation Station, not for Retrobat, if that makes sense. So you, you might get some that are Batasira themed. But obviously you can pick and choose. Charbook is another nice one. Um, so you can go through here and just sort of download and add add them as you see fit. Uh, but like I say, the standard one's quite good. Um, and then Content Download. I think this is what they, they pulled out in the intro video, the highlight video that... I think content da download was always here, but they, they've added to it. Um, and there's some games you can actually download, some demos. Obviously, this is all going to be freeware um, and that stuff. So there's some demos there, some sh sh shareware, shareware <laughs> version of Doom. Um, so yeah, you can actually get some games. Even if you know, don't have any games already you, and you're starting from scratch, you can actually go and, uh, and download some games, which is quite cool. Um, and then intro videos, so when Retrobat starts you can have a splash screen, so a little video intro, and you can go now and, and download these from here, which is quite cool. <clears throat> um, I don't think you can preview them, I think you just you can basically click on download, so. Uh, but then, interesting, at the bottom you hit, it's quite good, if you've downloaded some, um, there's an update version, so, you know, if, if a new version of if the video comes out or or any of these items up here come out you can you can do an update you don't have to just kind of reinstall um launcher pack for 3d sense quite interesting um shaders and mega bezels so um you have uh, be bezels etc already but it's part of the the bezel project but then here's where you can pick additional ones there's shaders to uh to add as well the shaders are basically where you, when you play a game it can add effects onto the screen so quite quite a common one is if you're playing arcade machines like this one here says so CRT so the old cathode ray tube TVs you know the big bulky TVs with the you know the vacuum steeled screen um, obviously when uh, games are designed for them they had these um, the scan lines that went across um, um, horizontally across the screen um, or was it vertically they went across the screen anyway um, and it kind of gave that look, you know, quite distinct look and feel to the game um, and quite often uh, some of the graphics were were designed with those scan lines um, in, take into account um, so you can actually see some, you know, quite often see side by side comparisons of, a, of an old arcade game on a CRT monitor compared to a, a modern um, modern flat screen and it looks a lot different so quite common people will apply a shader to kind of apply artificial scan lines over the top to make it look and feel like it's running on an old CRT screen, which is quite cool. So yeah, um, yeah, like I say, that bit, that bit has been in um, the content download a bit has been enhanced, and then the bezel project, like I say, is is here as well. You've got this is always there. So a lot of these are I've already installed, um, but these are basically all the um, the bezels or you know the the, the artwork that appears on the left hand right of the screen to fill in the, the blank bars. If you're running, I mean, obviously with some systems you can run it full screen, 16 by 9, and fill up your whole screen. Um, um, that that's fine, I guess, for more modern systems that are designed to run widescreen. But for a lot of the old, the older systems that are always designed to run 4 by 3, you know, but not square, but almost square screen. If you run that on a widescreen, you're going to end up with big, thick black bars down each side of it. The bezels will fill that for you, make it look look it nice. Like I say, for each system you've got, you can go in and download all the bezels. So I've got a little tick next to all of them, so I've obviously downloaded them all already, which is good. Uh, but yeah, that's I guess kind of it. Like I say, on the whole, it's still an emulation station, so it still sort of looks and feels the same, but just everything's been enhanced, um, new system supported, etc. Everything's had a bit of a revamp. And like I say, for, for me, everything's running 
you know, I think a lot quicker, <laughs> a lot smoother. Um, sometimes before when I've had um, not only this theme but some other themes running and I had quite a lot of systems added, it can struggle at startup and sometimes sort of crash out. But I've not had that single single time with version six. So what they've done has worked. It's really good. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of it for now. Um, just wanted to kind of I guess share the news that version six is out. Um, to show you how easy it is to upgrade and obviously take through some of the change logs. I'll put all the links in the description as usual. Um, so yeah, enjoy, have a play, and obviously I think obviously it's still new, so they'll, they'll appreciate some feedback. Of course, you go onto their website, go onto their forum, and provide some feedback. If you do find some issues, hopefully they've ironed a lot of them out with the beta testing. But yeah, um, hope you enjoy, and I'll be back soon with another video.